More teapots. Cut away teapot number two, which is the fifth teapot in my six-part series on these. Um, this one was a lot easier than the previous one, I'll say that much. This one flowed from the beginning. You can see here. Uh, from the beginning, I was trying to go for kind of like my moon jar kind of shape, which is kind of skinny at the bottom, then widens, and then it comes dramatically back to a very, very small opening at the top. So um, you got to get good height out of it first. So again, I'm going through my usual pulls. Uh, doing a lot of calling, kind of trying to get it as skinny as I possibly can at the bottom first, opening out, and then collaring back in. Taking away at the bottom, coming up here, opening out, and then collaring back in, and trying to make what we call a shoulder at the top, or a nice big bend over the top. If you think about it as a human figure, you have the, the foot at the bottom, and the shoulder at the top, neck, that's what I'm working on right now. So. Trying to get this in nice and tight, round that shoulder over, making the uh, shelf of my lid, a little decorative element there, and that's it. Cutting away some of this clay at the bottom. Now on this guy, I was going to make a really, really small, small lid, but the little hole on the top just wasn't working for me, so I just decided to just flatten out a piece. And just make it look basically a little hockey puck, a little disc, and then I was going to just add a little coil thrown piece on the top later on. Uh, I needed a big spout on this one. I wanted to have this one start at the bottom and, and work its way up to the top. Um, so I wanted to have a big spout. So again, you have to go really slow and keep compressing. And don't worry that the top's getting all wobbly. I just I just kind of get the shape I want and realize I can always just cut off the top later on if I want. So the, the top right now is really wobbly. Again, it gets really thin and you have to really compress and try to keep it tight, otherwise it'll it'll go a little bit wonky on you. So if you start seeing it start to twist on you, just ease off, compress it in with that rib tool, and then come back and, and work again. So I kind of had the general shape I want here, cutting it off. Here I go again with the hacksaw blade. I'm just going to cut out a huge section of this, take it off to the side, smooth out this, and then get a slab of clay. You want your slab to be somewhat leather hard. If it's too flimsy, it won't hold up. So I've let this slab dry out for a while. Come back in here, slip and score both sides, make a good strong connection, and then put it on. Always make it bigger than you need to because then you can just cut off the excess you don't want, which I'm doing here. And then leave yourself enough to kind of really blend it in. Again, if you just make it the exact same size, I don't feel like you get a strong enough connection, and it might try to pull away. With this, you can kind of blend the two pieces together. Even though it looks dirty and filthy now, you can come back later on with your sure form and sponge and kind of really clean it up. So, of course, as I'm working on this, I'm constantly putting finger marks on this. So here I am um, taking that piece that I used last time, creating a shape that I want, Get my X-Acto blade, cutting out the shape, and then I'll add it on here off camera. I forgot to put my camera back, so you can see I put it on already. Taking that spout, I've cut off a lot of this one. I thought I was going to have a lot lower, but I thought it belonged on the top, so I, I cut off a lot of it. And I'll put it at the top. This one kind of curves almost downward a little bit. Again, cutting out plenty of holes with water. A nice connection. Popping it on. So this doesn't have to be perfect right again. Again, as soon as I uh, am finished here, I'll go back with the sponge and hit everything else. This was probably too wet to start doing this, so I, I went and cleaned it up later on. But here it is when it's totally done. I like the little rib at the bottom, where the, the two pieces kind of made the little uh, ridge at the bottom, which is kind of a cool little thing that I didn't know what happened. You can see I put the little coil on the top of the lid for a little handle. Overall, once again, a nice piece. Hope you enjoyed watching.